So in the previous video, we saw this example of a monthly cost function for a phone bill, and we came up with an equation that had the form right here. We computed the cost as some constant number plus the rate of change times t. <clears throat> and I remarked that this is what a linear function looks like. So let's generalize this a little bit. And this is probably something that's familiar to you. In general, we can put down some notes on linear functions. If we have a function y equals f of x that is a linear function, then it always will have this form, this structure. y is equal to mx plus b, where m is the slope or rate of change of y with respect to, to x. And b is the y-intercept, the vertical intercept. Or we can also think of it as the value of y when x is 0, so our starting value. If y equals f of x is linear, then equally spaced input values produce equally spaced output values. Input values produce, i got to sneak that in here, equally based output values. In our previous example, for every 30 minutes of talking, we had to pay $3 more. So equally spaced 30 minutes, so 30 minutes of talking led to $3 increases in the phone bill. That's what we mean. So equally spaced always 30, 30, 30 plus 30 plus 30 plus 30 led to the same increase in our output value, which was the phone bill. Now equations can be written in different forms. So one that we just saw, we call um, the slope intercept form. Not that that's very important, but we have y is equal to mx plus b, where m and b have definite meaning. Another way that you can, so m was the slope, and b was the y-intercept, or vertical intercept, we can also write it as y minus y0 equal to m times x minus x naught, where m is still the slope. No difference there. But then we have an additional point, x0, y0, is just some point on the line. Finally, there is another way to write this, um, where we could just bring all the interesting pieces of the equation to one side, and we could say we have ax plus bx plus c is equal to 0, um, and a, b, and c are constants. Sometimes it's more convenient to look at lines in one way than the other, but most of the time we'll be working with either the first or the second one. Let's look at one quick example just to see um, these different forms of our equation. So let's say somebody gives you an equation that looks like this, 3x plus 5y is equal to 20. Then, and you would like to know what are the slope and the y-intercept of this this line, you can always change the form. So we can start with 3x plus 5y is equal to 20, 
and then we can solve for y. To bring it into slope intercept form. So the first thing we can do is subtract 3x from both sides. That gives us 5y is equal to 20 minus 3x. And then we can divide by 5. That gives us y is equal to 20 minus 3x divided by 5. And we can distribute the 5. So we have 20 divided by 5 minus 3 fifth divided, uh, 3 divided by 5, which is minus 3 fifth, times x. And that simplifies a little bit. So this is 4 minus 3 fifth x. That is slope intercept form. So we have y is equal to 4 minus 3 fifth x. Or if you prefer, y is equal to minus 3 fifth x plus 4. Doesn't really matter how we write it, but we can see here our slope, which is multiplied by x, and then the number, the constant that's tacked on, that is our vertical intercept. So it's, it's easy to draw this way. That's probably why we make such a big deal out of it. I have the vertical intercept as positive 4. So I know that much. And then I know my line is decreasing and the slope is minus 3 fifth. So I know both things. If you want a little bit more practice, you can do the rest of these exercises. And if you want to see, so there are some exercises that work with con contexts, costs of a case of apple. Some just go describe lines in different ways. So it definitely doesn't hurt for you to look through these and see if you can do these problems. You can look at the solutions as well. They are linked uh, right below a little bit further below this video.